Hey guys, Chad and Sebastian here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Carnesville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we are going to talk about a fairly common medical issue in reptiles. <clears throat> happens a lot, can be very easy to deal with, can actually come along very, very easily as well, okay? But before we get into that right here, right there, I think I'm touching it right there, uh, that's our subscriber button. Go ahead and hit that. Uh, for those of you that are already subscribed, we appreciate you doing so. And for those that just subscribed, we appreciate you doing that as well. Uh, let's get right into this. It's called ulcerative stomatitis, also known as mouth rot in reptiles. Now, Mouth rot can happen for many, many different reasons, okay? But the most common reasons is usually from debris or uh, items that they take in, such as with their food. Uh, for example, let's say they're taking in something that was wet uh, or they wet it down from saliva and they drew in a piece of bedding or a piece of sand or a piece of something like that and it gets in there uh, and they crunch down on it and it creates a scratch on the gum line, then that can open up a cavity to having bacteria and then ultimately ending up in an infection, which is of course, Mouth rot, okay? Now, there's a couple of ways to tell as far as mouth rot goes. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some pictures up of a few examples of mouth rot we've dealt with over the years. i uh, just give you a couple of pictures. So check these out real quick. Okay, so with that being said and that being seen, you've seen a few examples of what mouth rot looks like. Now, a lot of folks will call us from time uh, from time to time, um, thinking that they have uh, their their reptile has mouth rot, and it really doesn't. Um, a lot of the times, the, the the gums may be swollen, or there may be a, uh, 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 tissue that's swollen. Uh, and we have them send us pictures and things like that. And it turns out that it's not actually mouth rot, it's just swollen. And a lot of the times that's due to rubbing, okay? Just sheer, simple rubbing, rubbing the glass of the enclosure, rubbing the walls of the enclosure, rubbing something, okay? That's not actually mouth rot. Mouth rot itself is going to have what you've seen in the pictures before. There's gonna be open cavities, there's gonna be uh, yellow plaque infected tissue uh, that's gonna to have to be dealt with, okay? Now, one of the things that we would do uh, in these particular cases, and again, I'm not going to tell you to do this at home. I cannot tell you to do this at home because you can end up damaging your animal. But what we're trying to do is give you uh, what to look out for. But what we would do is actually take, like what Sebastian's going to show you here, uh, we would take something, stick it inside of its mouth, and actually open that mouth up, uh, get them to open their mouth so we can actually see inside of their mouth to see how far or how bad the infection goes. We've actually had mouth rot go all the way up into the skull before, go all the way down into the jawline and literally deteriorated the lower jaw of a boa constrictor as a matter of fact uh, the lower jawline of a, of a boa constrictor uh, because the mouth rot had went so long and the infection had just kept right on going uh, typically uh, easy debridement of the tissue getting all the nasty bacteria fed in tissue out of there and then treating it uh, with uh, either antibiotics or you can treat it with uh, things like peroxide and neospore and stuff like that uh, that will also help keep infection from spreading, but it also acts like an antiseptic as well, which is incredibly helpful. Now, when we start dealing with mouth rot, Again, the biggest issues is going to be based off of the habitat itself, okay? Nine times out of ten, something involving the habitat. I have seen mouth rot happen. Now, remember we said before, when it comes to rubbing, like a snake rubbing because maybe the pen's too small or it wants to get out, it wants to get a little bit more active or it wants to go uh, go mobile, um, then they can push and push and push. And what that'll do is it'll, it's kind of like you hitting something over and over. Maybe it doesn't break the skin, but it causes the swelling inside of the head, yeah, something like that. Okay, same concept uh, where they're just pushing and it just, it causes swelling uh, due to the pressure. Uh, when, when we're talking about mouth rot, which is a little bit different uh, than we're talking about actual, again, we're talking about actual infection. And that can happen, especially in cases like water dragons uh, and a lot of your more active lizards. Iguanas is one that's notorious for it, where they'll take off across the pen and just go face first into the glass or face first into the screen or, you know, you're 
wire mesh or whatever it is that's that's surrounding your pin. Uh, that can happen as well. Or damage enough to the front of the face or the side of the face where they lose the scaling or they lose some of the the, the outer layer of scales and and uh, and skin. And what happens is that will then of course create that opening or that cavity to allow that bacteria to go in. Now, with Sebastian showing you this, he's going to talk to you, uh, of course, and kind of explain uh, the process in which he's going through and what he's going to be doing. Okay, so we're going to show you how to do this. These are speculus made for birds, uh, smaller mammals, stuff like that. Uh, like we said, we don't advise doing this. Uh, we're not showing you how to do it because it is on you and your reptile. But what you're going to do is you're going to take it, you're going to push it right in, you get it, you get it right in there and then flatten it out. And now you have the mouth open. Now I'm not cramming it all the way to the back of his mouth as to spread it too wide because you can break his jaw. But now we've got it open enough to where you can look in and anywhere inside this mouth, nasal cavity, gum line, teeth, uh, even on the tongue, sometimes the tongue, uh, you'll, have, you'll have the stuff on there. So that would be how you get into it. And then after that, usually it's a two person job because with me I had both my hands busy. So then you would have to have someone else that could either do the peroxide and the esporin, whatever, and, and take care of the issue. All right, now, with that being said, I'll probably have to cut that out. Now, with that being said, he's what he showed you, and the whole point of showing you this, is if you're ever worried about something inside of your lizard's mouth, yes, be very careful. If you're gonna do this, you can damage their jaws, you can break their jaws, you can hurt, you can hurt their necks in any way, in shape, and form. We don't suggest you doing this, but if you have been in reptiles long enough and you have enough skills and uh, skill set with your animals uh, and finesse with your animals, and you want to at least look inside of there uh, as a concerned pet owner, no different than you know what somebody would do with their dog or their cat or trying to look inside the mouth, that's fine. Um, whatever the case may be. Just to make sure that there's no actual issues in there. Doing this right here, it actually helps in a lot of different areas if you know what you're looking forward to at least before you have to bring it to us or somebody like us, whatever the case may be, um, that uh, to find out whether there's respiratory infection in there, find out if there's mouth rot, if there's swollen uh, gums, if there's uh, even deformities inside of the jawline, uh, if there's tears in the back of the throat, uh, so on and so forth. So there's so many things that you can look for in the those particular cases. Uh, but again, what he was showing you is just a uh, just an easy, quick way of how we just first get that mouth open to even see how bad the, the uh, mouth rot is or how deep in the mouth rot goes. Doesn't hurt them at all. Uh, it's a simple, easy thing to do, and as speculas, they're, they're made for reptiles, birds, for all kinds of things. Now, again, like I said, I'm not going to make this too, too in-depth uh, because I don't want to I don't want to try and get too far into this uh, for somebody to try and do too much mimicking that does not have the experience in it. What we're trying to show is what to look out for and what things look like if it becomes a problem if you start seeing this. Now, some of the some of the other symptoms they're not going to want to eat, okay? Because of course the jawline is going to be sore, the jaws are going to be sore. They're not going to want to eat. Uh, they'll probably even keep their mouth open a little bit, which also presents a lot like respiratory infection, where they keep their 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 mouth just slightly open because if they keep it closed, then it causes pressure and, uh, uh, and pain on the jawline. Um, loss of weight is another one. Excessive uh, saliva, which of course presents just like respiratory infection. Uh, excessive saliva or salivation uh, due, to the, uh, due to the mouth rot. And then of course swelling can happen as well. But remember what I said, swelling doesn't always necessarily mean mouth rot could mean something simple. So make sure to pay attention to that or have uh, your reptilian expert uh, confirm that for you, whether it's just swollen or whether it's actual mouth rot, okay? Now, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, this is for pretty much any kind of reptiles. Um, and that's a snakes, uh, snakes and lizards, turtles don't, not quite the same thing. Uh, but uh, for any kind of snake, any kind of lizard, it's about the same concept. Uh, it's something that's very, very common uh, and commonly done. And uh, again, remember, a lot, of the, a lot of the reasons this happens, it could be taken in like a rabbit or a rat and it scratches the gum line. It could take in a piece of debris. It could have uh, damage from swinging, uh, like a snake swinging at you and then missing and hitting the glass or the cage or a rocky item or something, you know, just anything inside the pen and it hits it just right and it creates whatever creates a debris uh, or um, 
creates a cavity or a scratch on the gum line can open that up to infection, okay? Now, this is Chad and Sebastian. We are the Reptile Rangers. We are here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We appreciate you following along. Make sure to write us in. Let us know what you want us to film on. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, the like button. Make sure to hit the bell for notifications. And as always, we do appreciate you following along week after week. We'll either see you on the next episode or we'll see you here at the zoo. Later.